salvation. Let's welcome our pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Please be seated. Glory. Yes, days of bliss is here. Tell your neighbor, days of bliss is here. Are you excited? I am what the Holy Spirit is going to do in our lives today. I want to use this opportunity to thank my highly esteemed man of God, Reverend Dr. Tony Aburime, for giving me the privilege to minister to you all, both on site and online. Thank you so much, Pastor Sir. I love you. You know, Christianity is something to be proud of, about, something to enjoy. It's something that we willingly came and God curated an atmosphere for us to enjoy life. Hallelujah. In this atmosphere, there are experiences. You and I supposed to have. So my topic today is divine experiences of a staunch Christian. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Divine experiences of a staunch Christian. You know, these experiences make us to think the way we think. Make us to talk the way we talk. Make us to relate with one another the way we relate. Make us to relate with God, relate with Christians, relate with non-Christians, relate with angels, relate with Satan and his demons. Praise the Lord. These experiences are, you know, what made our forefathers, Isaac, Abraham, David, Jacob, you know, Many of them, Moses, Elijah, Elisha, Daniel, even Jesus, to start strong and finish strong. And God wants you and I to start strong and finish strong. Now, you may think, we may ask, what are these experiences? Yes, we're going to get into that. But I just want to use uh, someone, explain someone that had these experiences and it made him to stand out. These experiences, sometimes it's not funny. Sometimes the flesh may not want it. Sometimes it's scorchy. I want us to go to the book of Daniel, chapter 1. We will start from verse 3. But before that, 1 into 2. You know, the Bible says, King jo Joachim, the king of Judah, and his people were held in, captive, in captivity. They were in captivity. They were held captive in Babylon. King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, captured the king of Judah and his people and brought them to Babylon. Then, in verse 3, that's where I want us to go to. King Nebuchadnezzar gave an instruction to, one of, uh, to the chief of his servants, Ashpenaz. Let's read. And the king spake. Please, I wanted New King James so that everybody will understand. New King James, please. New King James, okay. The king, then the king instructed Ashpenaz, the master of his Enoch, Enoch's, the master of he, all his servants, the castrated people serving in his palace, to bring some of the children of Israel and some of the king's descendants and some of the nobles, verse four. Please, we need to be fast. I had Young men in whom there was no blemish, but good looking, good looking, gifted in all wisdom, possessing knowledge, and quick to understand who had ability to serve in the king's palace and whom they might teach 
the language and literature of the Chaldeans. Verse 5. And the king appointed for them daily provisions. Daily provision of the king's delicacies. His kind of food. Can you see the type of people this king requested for? People, men without sports. Men without blemish. Noble men. Men with knowledge. Men with understanding. Select them and bring them. Train them. You know, it's train them. Give them the kind. Indoctrinate them. They are from Israel. But they will not exhibit Israelite attitude in Babylon. And of the wine which he drank, his kind of drink, and three years of training for them, so that at the end of that time, they might serve before the king. As they were, they couldn't, because they were still carrying attitude of their nation. How many of us, you know, okay, let's go further before I, verse 6, let's go further before I get into that. Now, from among those of the sons of Judah, Remember, Judah is one tribe of Israel among the 12 tribes. So if you hear Israel, I'm talking Israel. Just now I'm talking about Judah. We are Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Verse 6, verse 7, I mean. To them, the chief of the Enoch's gave names. He gave Daniel. He must also, they must also change their names. They shouldn't carry Israel, you know. The name they came with to serve in the palace. Daniel, he, Daniel, they gave the, the name, they, he gave Daniel the name Belteshazzar. To Hananiah, Shadrach. And to Meshach, Mishael, Meshach. And to Azariah, Abadnego. Verse 8, this is where I want us to go. But Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defy himself with the portion of the king's delicacies. Which means eating that kind of food instructed by the king will make him to defy himself. Will make him to corrupt himself. Will make him to defy his spirit. He said he purported. How many of us, we are active Christians in our original nation. We came here, we are now naturalized. You know, you are not in bondage, you are not in captivity, you know, like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But you join us. It's good to join us. It's a beloved country. It's, it's, in Australia, it's a very good country. But have you defied yourself? Have you joined the masses? To eat the kind of food, you know, to behave the way they behave, to talk the way they talk, to, you know, see Sunday service as nothing. My job is very important than my relationship with God. Daniel was in captivity, but he told himself, I will not defile myself. I will not eat. It had brought Daniel into the favor and goodwill of the chief of the Enoch's. So God favored him, and the chief of the Enoch answered to his request. You know, gave the request. He, you know, gave him the request he asked for. What Daniel requested, because of time, what he requested, he said, "I will not eat this food. Give me vegetables, and drink, and water." That's all he requested. He didn't say. He didn't say, "Oh, I'm in captivity. If I refuse this, this thing now, they may kill me." No. When you stand out in your work with God, God will begin to use you. When, you. when you are not following the masses, you know, you just want to follow what everybody is doing. Daniel was in captivity. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were in captivity. But they told themselves they were not going to defy themselves. Verse, let's go to 19 because of time. 19 and 20, they refused to eat king's delicacies. Verse 19, then the king interviewed them, and among them, oh, 
None. Among them all, none was found like Daniel. Those that didn't eat king's delicacies. None was found like Daniel, Hananiah, Michelle, and Azaria. Therefore, they served before the king. When you stand out in your work with God, you will stand before kings, not before me men. When you don't join the crowd, because of your work with God, he will single you out and exalt you. But when you want to be, you know, everybody to love you, appreciate you, you know, God will leave you and you'll fight it all by yourself. Verse 20. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined them, he found them ten times better, ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers who were in all his realm. They didn't eat his food. Now, you will ask, what made them to refuse? What made them? They changed everything about them. They changed the names. Yes, you had opportunity to do that. But what goes into my tummy, I am responsible for that. That's what it means. What made them? They had experiences. One of these experiences is vision. My dear brothers and sisters, divine vision is very important as a Christian. Divine vision and divine purpose. Without divine vision and divine purpose, that is divine vision and purpose, you will just run, you know, as if somebody that has no hope or purpose to live here on earth. The things that happen to unbelievers will happen to you. Jesus had a vision. That's why he said, I want us to go to that Bible verse. John chapter 14, verse 6, from the Amplified. Vision, divine vision. What's your vision as a Christian? My dear brothers and sisters. He said, Jesus said to him, I am the only, not many ways, I am the only way to, the, to God. And the real truth, and the real life, no one comes to the Father but through me. Can you say that in your family? I'm the only way. I'm the only truth. I'm the only means people at work will come to Jesus Christ. In my workplaces. In, your, in my workplace. Can you say that Jesus understood his vision? He also said... Vision. In John chapter 9, verses 4 to 5 from the New King James. Please, let's be quick. He said, We must walk the works of him. I must. Sorry, I wanted to say why we. He, was, he personalized it. Vision. I must walk the works of him who sent me. Why it is day. The night is coming. When no one can walk, let's personalize this. I must, tell yourself, I must. I must. The, I must walk the walk of him, Jesus that sent me. While it is time, in Australia, is still, there's still opportunity for us to do the work of God. Time will come when you can preach, when I can preach. Either because God has taken us out of this place, or... Maybe some laws as they are purporting. But you can still preach the gospel. This is the time. Vision, divine vision. Secondly, high standard and expectations. God expects you to walk, to do his work, uh, work unconditionally. Greatness, 
divine, you know, great vision requires discipline. It requires discipline. Discipline of attitude, your tongue, your behavior, your time. It requires commitment and a relent relentless pursuit of excellence. You know, this is our watchword in this program. Manifestation of excellence. This high standard God expects you to have may bring a gap between you and those around you. Sometimes they think you are bragging. Sometimes they may think you are boasting. Sometimes they think, imagine in a family meeting. Family meeting is called. And you told them, oh, I can't come because I have so-so and so activity, church activity to go to. Sometimes a friend may invite you for a party, a cup of tea or something. But God has expectations of you. And some people, all they tell us is man's expectations. Living God's expectations. If you follow man's expectations, they may cheer you on. But remember, there is eternity. So this may bring a gap. Argument, differences between those around you. Because you may not be talking like them. You may not be behaving like them. You may not be relating like them. And they may think, who, who do you think you are? You are a king's kid. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. A priest. A royal priesthood. A royal priest. That's who you are. That's who you are. You are king. In. That's what Jesus made you to be. Second, thirdly, the burden of divine responsibility. You can't have a vision. You know, vision, the, the one I talked about, high standard and expectations, is a drive to your vision. The burden of responsibility is a drive to your vision, divine vision. You can't see anybody that say, I have a vision for something, and there are no responsibilities that are attached to it. You can't. These responsibilities, sometimes they may be overwhelming. But remember, if the, that vision is given to you by God, he will give you, you know, before vision, there is provision. Hallelujah. So burden, for, burden of responsibility in your work with God and sometimes it's not pleasant. It's not pleasant. That's why I said these experiences, they may not be pleasant. They may not be, maybe scorchy to the flesh. The next one, the need of solitude. This is where many people, even some Christians, they don't want to be alone. <laughs> they don't want to be rejected. Solitude. It is time, you know, a time for you to think. A time for you to meditate. A time for you to relate with God. For clarity, for revelation, and for direction. It's one of the experiences in the atmosphere God has brought us into. The next one is misunderstanding and rejection misunderstanding and rejection and some people they don't want to be rejected they don't want to be misunderstood they want to explain themselves and explain themselves and even explain to themselves to the to devil this is a time you see this period that is if you are in this if you're having an experience of misunderstanding and rejection, just know, you know, Bible says, when my mother and my father forsake me, the Lord will pick me up. Amen. When you are misunderstood, and there is nothing you can do. You know, sometimes misunderstanding, there, there's one that you can't explain. It's short. the more you explain, the more, you know, devil is complicating the matter. And you know that you have a divine vision. Leave it for God. Leave it for God. Let God tackle the matter. 
Rejection. You know, in that atmosphere of rejection, that's when, Bible says, one with God is majority. That's when you know Papa God is around, within, in you. That's when you know Holy Spirit is within, in, around you. That's when you know Jesus Christ is in and within you. Angels, cherubims, seraphims, thrones, dominions, principalities and powers, guardian angels, they surround you. You are not alone. That's when God will give you something that will make even the, those ones that reject you to say, wow, indeed, God is with this person. Misunderstanding and rejection. All you need to do is to be in that atmosphere. Hallelujah. The last one, the last one, the test of faith and patience. You know, Jesus, Jesus' faith was tested and he won. He was tested three times. Even when Pilate asked him, are you the Messiah? Don't you think I have ability to release you? His faith was test tested. He didn't send fire to kill or to burn all of them. That's where the Bible says, let the testing of your faith produce patience. Hallelujah. So th this atmosphere, this, uh, these experiences, as a Christian, ardent Christian, you must have it. It's compulsory for you to, you know, reach that place, eternity, where you will not experience rejection, where you will not experience misunderstanding, where there will be no responsibility except for you to praise God. Sharpen your vision in this program, my dear brothers brother and sisters. Have high standard and excellence. High standard and expectations. God expects you to walk in this atmosphere. He expects you to serve him without. The burden for responsibility. You can't say you are a Christian. You are not doing anything for our Lord Jesus Christ. There's some brethren, some Christians, they have turned to Internet Christians, this Sunday is to talk, check this pastor who is preaching best. That's not what God wants you to do. That's not divine vision for you. God wants you to be physically present in his house. He said, don't forsake that gathering. My dear brothers and sisters, this program... instruction and titillate.